So a new alien film is now out. But is this the perfect movie about the perfect organism, or does it belong in the airlock? Now, before we get into it, as usual, I won't mention any spoilers or things that I won't want to know myself before seeing the movie until after a very clear spoiler warning. Now, to give you guys my expectations for the film so you know where I'm coming from, first of all, I'm a huge Alien fan. I've seen every movie with Alien and or Predator in it, and that's saying something, because they're not consistently good, but the highs are really high. So, I was really looking forward to this one as usual, and I'm also a big fan of Fede Alvarez because of his Evil Dead remake from 2013 and the movie Don't Breathe, so I felt like this was a very promising combination. Because I was really excited as well when Ridley Scott was coming back to do Alien, but the results, I didn't hate it as much as other people seem to, but I was still disappointed with it. But I was really looking forward to this one, and I will say overall, I think this is a more general audience appealing movie that it still really appeals to fans and people that are very familiar with the series but even if you're not familiar with it and you didn't really like prometheus or alien covenant i don't think that's a sign that this one's not going to work for you either this one it's a lot more smaller scale it's a bit more self-contained and i feel like it tells a it's an entertaining movie even if you don't know the entire lore behind it and I think just coming into it, seeing another a movie in the Alien universe, I think this one, there are some things I feel like you may not love certain aspects of the film, but overall I think it's enjoyable. And so if the trailer seemed interesting to you, I think this is one that you'll enjoy. Now to go into a little bit more detail, but still no spoilers, this movie, from the beginning, I was like, all right, I'm in. Because the opening, it's very, there's like no dialogue in for large parts of it, like no audio, just during like the opening intro section. And it really sets the tone that it's not just, oh, Alien looks cool, so let's make a movie based around that and like cash in. It seems like they really respect the source material and the like the set design that watching the movie, there's a lot of stuff in it that feels like, yeah, this could be taken from the set of the original film. And there's a lot of Easter eggs for fans of the Alien series, but it's nothing so jarring that's like if you don't know it then it's gonna be like i don't know what they're talking about like there's nothing where it's like oh we need proper noun from alien 3 and if you didn't see that then you're gonna be confused for the next 10 minutes it's always usually just kind of like tossed in if you haven't if you don't recognize it you might be like that was kind of odd the way they like framed that scene or shot that but it's not anything that's gonna like break it for you that's uh, nothing's essential to have seen before so I think it's like, I really enjoyed it, but like I said, I've seen like every Alien and Predator movie, but even then, if you just think it sounds interesting or the trailer looks cool, I think this is one that you might come out of the theater and just be like, oh yeah, that's pretty good, or like, yeah, not bad, but I don't think you're going to be coming out of it being like, man, that was terrible. Like, I think this is definitely a tier above Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Definitely doesn't reach like the level of Alien or Aliens, but... I think this is one that you will enjoy if it's something that seems up your alley, at least. And so going to the movie, though, still, like, no spoilers at the beginning. Like, I think just getting to see more of the universe of the Alien movie, even outside of the ship, just seeing, like, a mining colony and seeing, like, the layout of everything, it feels very Blade Runner-esque, which makes sense with the original film being directed by Ridley Scott. And it feels like they really carry that tone and approach to the movie into this one. So as a fan of the series, I was very excited with the movie. And there's a lot of scenes, a lot of like minor things. I was like, oh, I like I recognize that and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed it. And there's also a lot of like good shots, like the cinematography throughout the film. There's a lot of moments that I enjoyed. And it's something that as the movie goes on, I feel like there's stuff that I'm like, oh, man, that's pretty cool. Oh, OK, that was also pretty cool. It's not just like, yeah, it's all kind of like set up and then the rest of it's just kind of it playing out i feel like they still introduce stuff that it means it continues to be consistently exciting it's not just like a quick burn and then you're there for like another hour or so so i think that gives you a pretty good idea of if you'll like this movie or not or whether you should see it and so i think that's about all i want to say before getting to spoiler territory so this is your warning if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to go in blind or not have everything laid out this is the spoiler warning. Feel free to go now and check out the movie if it seems like your thing. Okay, so now getting more into the later part of the movie and more of the overall impression of it, rather than just focusing on the first like 15 minutes or so, 
this is a movie that I really enjoyed, like I said, and going through it, even as an Alien fan, like, I feel like a lot of it, it is very, I don't want to say linear, but it's kind of like, it follows a pattern, I feel like every Alien movie does, and this one, I feel like, I feel like they did do a lot of it, that's like, oh yeah, you know, this is a similar pace, and, or like, sequence of events almost, as other movies, but they still added stuff into it that I felt like was interesting. Not all of it I thought was like, oh, they like that was a home run. But I'm at least glad that they added stuff to it or like they took that attempt with it rather than just playing it safe and not going like not swinging for the fences. And so just going through the movie, watching this and like the setup of it, I did like I think kind of similar to the original Alien movie. That's all like people on like a mining crew. The characters in the movie, they're not like, oh, we're like well trained for this and we're like doing pretty well in society as it is it's like this one it's like even lower that they're like basically indentured ser servants which is basically slaves working for Wayland yutani mining and then they have this opportunity to get out and things don't quite go that way because it's an alien movie but i felt like it was an interesting premise although i will say i didn't feel like i really loved the characters in it which I don't want to talk about any every point that I make. I just compare it to other existing Alien movies. But watching the movie, I felt like the characters, they were fine. And it was kind of like, oh, I like the premise or like what they represent, their relationship and stuff like that. I was like, oh, that's kind of like, I'm looking forward to seeing how this unwraps throughout the film. But they weren't really characters that when they start getting killed off, I really felt like, oh, man, I really like that person. And I don't think you were exactly supposed to like them. But I feel like that's something that maybe could have been enhanced or would have improved the film. But even without it, still really good. And so just going through the setup of like, hey, here's the ship. We're going to get those pods. We're going to get out. It's only going to take us like 30 minutes. So it crashing in 36 hours, not going to be a problem. I'm like, well, the runtime's two hours. So good luck. But just seeing all the stuff go wrong and the part where the like chest burster comes out of like the chest, I can kind of see it. I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes known as the breast burster when it comes out like higher up on the chest. That scene where it comes out, the ship starts flying and like knocks into other stuff and everything. I felt like it was just watching like a Rube Goldberg of everything go wrong for these characters that are still on the ship, just watching it all happen. And so I felt like throughout the movie, there's a lot of moments like that. And even some moments where it's like, it feels very fortunately orchestrated to have a good outcome, but still exciting to watch. And so throughout the movie, like I said, there's lots of fan service that there's a lot of like minor things that I noticed, even having like the bird that like dips into the water in the background of the table when they're eating at the beginning of the movie. I think if you've seen the other movies and like, like I said, I've seen every single one, I felt like that was definitely rewarded. And it felt like it was really made by someone that was a fan of all of the movies, not just like, oh, I'm going to take pieces from these ones and kind of like ignore the rest, which I wouldn't really have an issue with and you know can't wouldn't hold it against them but i felt like it was really passion driven throughout it and so watching the movie one thing that's also kind of a reference that's like if you that i do feel like is more if you haven't seen the previous movies you're gonna be a bit confused by like the reveal but having the the cyborg or android i mean rook that's like the same model as ash from the original alien movie and it's like ian holm that way that they, they like do the reveal, it definitely feels like if I didn't recognize it, I'd just be like, I guess that's a cameo or something like that. And watching, I will say this is one part that I didn't feel like when they showed it, it wasn't like, whoa, that's really impressive. It was like, oh, that's a cool concept to have the same model that looks like Ian Holm from the from the original movie. But I felt like the like visuals of it didn't quite nail it. That still kind of felt like oh, it's like, seems like CG and looks a bit fake, but still something that was an interesting concept, at least. And one thing I had to, like, look it up later. So, first of all, it's not actually Ian Holm because he passed away four years ago in 2020, but they had someone else. They did use him for, like, facial reference and, like, voice reference, and they had a different actor do the facial and voice acting for it, which I thought that was kind of interesting. And so it was nice to see him again. And one thing about the movie that I didn't really want to mention earlier, because it does, like, change over time, is at the beginning of the movie, I felt like the set design, everything was, like, very cool. But then it, 
the character Andy, the way he talks and acts, I kind of just like felt bad for the actor because being in an alien movie and then having to perform as like a very like shy kind of glitchy android, I was like, it just kind of felt uh, like awkward to watch, which I think is kind of the intent, but it still kind of felt like too awkward as an audience that it wasn't exactly like, oh, that was a good choice. But throughout the movie, once he gets like the Rook's like authoriz authorization chip and everything like that, and the change to see him just like lock in and like catch the face hugger by the tail and stuff like that, I felt like it was worth it. But that's something that I definitely feel like it improved later on in the movie. But in the beginning, it was kind of like, this is a little bit rough and hopefully it improves. Although I was kind of like just expecting that he might just get killed off early and then he won't be around. But I'm definitely glad that they went with it the way they did. That's kind of like he changes and seeing that change, it feels a lot more dramatic from where it started. Now, throughout the movie, I felt like there were a lot of like cool concepts that, you know, I've seen a lot of alien movies. Like I say, they all kind of follow a similar pattern. I felt like this one had a few things that are like different and just kind of like played with the rules of an alien film. And so them like going having like the part where they have to go through the room with all the face huggers in it. So they set the temperature to the same temperature as their bodies so that they can go through silently. I felt like that was an, like a really cool concept that was both something that's like, oh, that sounds cool. And then watching it's like, oh, like they did it in a pretty good way. Although I will say, when he's talking in the intercom after being told that they can't make noise, I was kind of like, he's talking a lot more than I think someone would in their situation. But I also really enjoyed the part where he get, basically gives him a rundown of like, all right, we have to go through. You can't talk. If you get nervous or scared, your body temperature is going to go up. And if you sweat, that's going to cool you down. So try not to do that. And then the door is just immediately open. That's not like, all right, you guys ready to do this? All right, let's go. It was just like, it's showtime. So I thought that was like a cool scene and everything. And just throughout, a lot of, like, really good shots of, like, when they get to the ship for the first time and they're going through the air vent and that shot of just, like, dead on. Any shot like that I felt like was really cool. And I love good visuals and use of lighting throughout the movie. But I felt like you can make a lot of wallpapers from this film. And another cool concept that I thought that I enjoyed throughout the movie is the part that they're like, well, we can't shoot them because then their blood's going to burn through and, like, like, break the vacuum into space. But the part that they turned the zero G on so that they can shoot them without it splattering everywhere. I was like, all right, this is really cool. And so throughout the movie, it was just like, it didn't feel like they set stuff up in the beginning. And it's like, okay, now we just kind of like, that's it. It felt like they still had interesting things throughout it. And even as someone who's like really paid attention to kind of like the lore and evolution of the aliens of like Xenomorphs, I felt like this also got to like, I, I felt like, they didn't really disgrace like what had come before it where it's like oh we're gonna like change things to be a lot different it felt like they still like kept in line with it but added their own stuff to it because in the original alien like you see the chest burster it runs off and it comes back as a full xenomorph in this movie getting to see like the cocoon that's in and them try to kill it in that i was like oh this is something that's like we haven't seen before but it's kind of a stage in the lifespan of it that it's not like, oh, we added this thing or changed what existed. It was just like, oh, we're going to like show you more of it. So I really enjoy that. And jumping to like the end of the film, I felt like talking about the movie, I can't ignore like the humanoid alien at the end of it, which I looked at the credits at IMDb and they listed as the offspring. So I guess that's what I'll call it from now on. But I felt like that was like seeing... Like, the beginning of the movie, when they're like, oh, I'm pregnant, by the way. It's like, okay, a pregnant woman in an alien, in an alien movie, they're not just going to go like, oh, she died. And now it's like a bit more sad. It's like, okay, I feel like something is going to happen with it. And so seeing her, like, inject the compound Z and the resulting creature from it, I was like, okay, I'm glad to see something different. To, like, see another, like, variation of a xenomorph. And like I said... This is kind of like what I was referencing. That's like, they don't always like nail it, but I'm glad they swung for the fences at least. And I thought it was interesting and like looked kind of cool. But if someone, if I was talking with someone that had seen the movie and they're like, yeah, I thought that was like kind of laughable. I'm like, I can kind of understand why and when exactly hold it against them. But I thought it was still pretty cool to see. And one interesting thing about it was that when I was watching like how 
long and tall it is and like so thin i was like okay i'm kind of really hoping that doug jones played it and i looked into it it's played by robert uh bobrovsky i can't really pronounce his last name i tried looking up a, pronoun- a pronunciation of it and on a podcast he was on they just called him rob bob so i'm like yeah i kind of understand why but he's like a seven foot seven like high school basketball player and so seeing like knowing that it's him playing the offspring in the movie i was like this makes a lot more sense because it does kind of look like him and like the silhouette of his body. I'm like, yeah, definitely lines up. But I thought that was something that was really interesting. Although I think hearing that, that that's who is playing it. I'm like, oh, that sounds cooler than I think it came off in the actual movie. But again, something that I'm glad that they went for. And throughout the movie, there are a few times that like, there's a lot of payoff in the movie that they kind of like mention something and then it comes up later. And one thing that I felt like was a little too, like, blatant, I guess, was that they get into the lab and they're like, oh, this is like a research station and stuff like that. And like the compound Z and they're kind of like explaining that exposition. The video of them that's like humans can endure space and they just put the rat basically into a like a high speed like um, press and like just a rat crushing machine. I was like. Okay, I feel like we could have gotten the point without a literal machine just to crush your ass. But then when they inject it with Compound Z and like it rebuilds itself, I was like, okay, that is pretty cool and kind of like warrants the payoff of, hey, <laughs> here's a video of a machine that just crushes a rat and that's it. And I will say, Compound Z, when they mentioned, I was like, that sounds really cool. I definitely want to see that. And so when the woman that's pregnant is about to inject it into herself, and they're like, no, 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 we can't. I was like, I kind of want to see it though. I know it's going to go badly, but I still want to see what happens. And so I was like glad that she does inject it later on. Although when like in the video where it's like they inject in the rat and immediately starts like rebuilding itself and it's all good again. I was like, oh, okay. So I was looking, I was expecting it to be like, they're going to inject themselves and basically like become a superhero for a little bit before it like takes over and they burst or whatever. But I was a little disappointed that she injects it and it doesn't seem like she really benefits it from benefits from it at all because she's still like limping to the to the ship to escape and stuff like that. So I felt like it was didn't really pay off for her at all because it led to the baby being like this the offspring and all of that that came with it without without even like fixing her legs so that she didn't have to limp to the ship anymore. But still something that I thought was interesting. And going back to the compound Z. As I was watching the movie, I was like, yeah, like, I think this is nice that I think the big issues with Prometheus and Alien Covenant was that they kind of tried to expand the lore too much and kind of, I feel like that's not really the appeal. It's like the big drawing factor, like the xenomorph, the set design, the visuals, all that is like really great in that throughout the Alien series. But I don't think anyone's really like, oh, please explain everything in the lore. I think having that mystery kind of helps it. And I'd still want to see stuff explored or like see the future of the timeline and what happens moving forward. But I feel like that the way they did in Alien Covenant and Prometheus didn't exactly do it in a satisfying way for me. And in this movie, that's like, oh, when they had the tie in with Compound Z, and it's like, oh, this is tying back. Like when they start, when they had like the hologram machine kind of, and it starts like showing the display, like the pod from Prometheus, I was like, Okay, that's Prometheus thing. I was like, I'm glad to see some payoff from that. And the way that they tied it in, that wasn't like, oh, this is the whole premise of the film and what it's all about. That's like, this is basically Prometheus 2. I'm glad that they had a tie-in and they were able to like expand from that without it really just kind of like beating you over the head with it or anything like that. So I'm glad to see that as well. And so, yeah, I thought that was cool and just really enjoyed the movie throughout it. And yeah, I think if you're a big Alien fan, I think this is a great, like I, overall, I feel like the movie, I really enjoyed it. I think it is a bit flawed, especially in some areas that's like, this didn't quite work. But overall, I really enjoyed it. And if you're an Alien fan, then I think this movie, it's definitely a good addition to the catalog of Alien films. It definitely raises the average Alien film quality across the, like, as a whole. And so I really enjoyed it. And it, I'm it's the way they ended it definitely seems like there's going to be sequels coming up and uh, yeah I definitely would be up for that whether it's directed by Fede Alvarez like I think he did a pretty good job with this 
or they just kind of want to expand it, try other stuff. I'm also like looking forward to it as long as it's more like this and less like Prometheus going down that route. But I really enjoyed it, and I'm also looking forward to the FX Alien series that's supposed to be coming out in the future. And it's going to be directed by Noah Hawley, who create who made like the Fargo TV series, which is my favorite TV show of all time. So I feel like there's a lot of good stuff. Like I feel like now is a better time to be an Alien fan than it has been for like the last like eight years or so. Or I think you can go even further than that. Like kind of since Aliens, I don't know if there's been a movie that's been like this is great. Like I like Predator and stuff like that, but I feel like Prometheus and Alien Covenant weren't exactly creating a lot of new Alien fans, rather than just kind of like capitalizing on people that already liked it. But Either way, I'm looking forward to what comes next. I really hope that they don't kind of go the Star Wars route. That's like, oh, we're going to make Alien its own genre and just have like all these big releases. I just want like a good Alien movie every few years. Not like we're going to milk this as much as we can. But for this movie, I really enjoyed it. And I felt like being an Alien fan really paid off. That there's a lot of shots that seem like really call back to old movies. And a lot of concepts that like both with the set design having like Ian Holm in it as Rook that looks like that's the same model as Ash and stuff like that. Even minor things like the way that Rain comes out with the elevator and there's like the fog and she's holding the rifle that's like okay this looks very like Ellen Ripley-esque and then the part that they find the rifles and it's like oh it has auto aim and stuff like that and it's like this is used by the colonial marines. I was like from aliens okay and yeah just like a lot of shots like even the part where they're like approaching the elevator and there's that like blue light across the ground it's like oh that's like from the light that's over the egg over the eggs at the beginning of alien so a lot of like minor things that i if you pay attention that you'll pick up on but again they do in a way that's not like no pun intended but alienating people that haven't seen the other alien movies so like i said really enjoyed it looking forward to more and yeah Overall, this movie, really enjoyable, a bit flawed in some areas, but glad that it exists. And not just in a, well, at least we got another Alien movie. It's like, no, I enjoyed this, and I think other people will as well. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching. I truly appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. So a quick epilogue to kind of just talk about my channel moving forward, because it's been a few months since I last posted a video. So... You know, nothing really happened. Like, I started a new job and I moved, but it's not anything that's, like, big enough to... that. That's not the reason that it's been, like, a few months. I just kind of fell off of it, wasn't really as consistent, and I want to get back into it, continue making content more consistently. Probably not a video every day, or and in addition to that, like, one or two videos a week on top of that. I think the goal is going to be more, like, at least uploading weekly and stuff like that. So the format, I've done movie reviews before. They've usually been more edited and having more visuals with it. Moving forward, like, I want to do more movie reviews, but it's kind of like, to do one, it takes quite a while, like, multiple hours of making it. And, I like, there's a quick turnaround that once the movie comes out, I kind of want to be able to have a video about it within a few days, not, like, a month later or anything like that. So to be able to do that, I think I'm going to try out, like... Get, go see the movie, come home, talk about the movie, which is why I did. I saw Alien Romulus, like, I got out of the theater, like, less than an hour ago. So I want to do that moving forward, but I definitely want to get better at just kind of going off script, improvising, and talking through it. But I also want to do gaming videos as well. It's not just going to be all movies from now on. So stay tuned to see what happens. I definitely want to do more, like I said, and looking forward to getting back into it, because just even, not even just, like, uh, looking at the the metrics of like what my channel has been doing it's like oh that's not as high as i want it to be it's like now i just kind of like feel like something's lacking not making videos and so definitely want to get back into it and be consistent with it so looking forward to doing more and hopefully you guys will be there with me so just kind of want to quick to quickly explain what's going on with the channel because it's been a few months and kind of what i'm expecting to go to happen moving forward since you know i haven't really addressed that in quite a while but that's it. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.